Okay, hey, hello again. This is Philip at thebest3d.com and I wanted to give you some insights on how we are building these city blocks for use in a PD Howler or PD Artist and even PD Particles uh, by turning them into brushes or uh, brush images and then uh, making them uh, part of the, the media collection. And uh, you may have seen the, er the, the, the first release, the first was based on images that came from this photograph. Uh, and there's always something that's uh, 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 interesting to grab as a city block in a shot like that. But you may also have occasionally some parts that you need to touch up, uh, remove. Perhaps there is a person somewhere that needs to be... Well, that one's blurry enough, but you you don't want to keep uh, personal uh, personally identifiable uh, features in there, uh, company names, uh, trademarked material. Uh, occasionally, you'll have a seagull flying across. <laughs> you want to be able to uh, to handle that, and and really, when when we isolate images like these, um, there's two parts to it. There is the the colors of the pixels that are visible. And then there's also the mask uh, that says which pixels in fact are visible, right? There's a, a visibility mask uh, and you do have sometimes uh, something a little bit more sophisticated than just a rectangular outline. Because like for instance here, if I, if I select something like this region, um, you could say, well, that's all I need. But if you look at details, um, especially let's say here along the right side, uh, you can see that the, the building goes out and then goes back in and then goes out and then goes back in and so you can't just do a single rectangular area here to select that. Right? You would need to have a, an additional, perhaps a shift click or something and and that's not what you do here in Irfan View, my favorite image viewer. That's something we do in Dog Waffle. So <coughs> let's see how we would go about, for instance, something where it's not even perfect because it's not uh, perfectly vertical, right? We have a little bit of a scenario here where uh, the buildings are uh, sideways, uh, slightly tilted, and you can tell by just moving them. If you move, look at this one here along this right edge where it's a very dark background, that will be easy to select, but it may not be perfectly aligned. You see there's a slight angle to that. Now it might be small enough that you don't care or it might be something we need to care. It really depends on how much detail you want to see on that building once you use it. I mean, if it's for drawing, uh, painting a background, cityscapes really far away, you might not notice. Um, so <coughs> we might need to do a little bit of adjustment and sometimes it's not worth the effort. What is definitely worth the effort is to remove things like uh, company names, uh, this one here. Um, we definitely will want to cover that, some s cover it up somehow. All right, so let's ha have a look. What I'm going to do is, in fact, just copy this, Control C. Usually you have an edit menu and you can copy um, your current image. I rarely do that. There it is, <laughs> Control C. Um, and then we launch uh, Project Dog Waffle. I'm going to go into PD Howler. And <coughs> in, in PD Howler, we can, once it's up and running, we can easily just. Um, keep it as a stored image or make it the current image uh, that we work with uh, coming up here any second. There you go. So I'm going to use control V to paste it and uh, paste it into the, into the existing or a new brush or a, a store it. Uh, we would like to store it. That makes it a stored image. Now if I click it, only a portion of it will fit into the small image. So I need to actually go from the stored copy into a new image. This one here creates a new image. All right, so here we are. There's a selection mask defined as well, so that's why I get some sort of a tinting here. I probably need to clear that. And there you go. All right, so the alpha channel is currently clear, and what we want to do is isolate a building and then try to uh, further refine uh, what part of that building we want to keep. Let's do an easy one first. This one here stands out as uh, pretty much straight up here, a little bit at an angle, 
but probably something we can quite easily fix. So how, how to isolate that and what part to isolate? Do we really need that rounded floor uh, roof here at the top? Yeah, maybe we do. But there's a couple of different scenarios. Some of it is going to, uh, some of this is going to be used for a post-apocalyptic scene. Then we may not even see this roof anymore, right? We may have parts of it broken away. So uh, let's have a look at how to perhaps work with that. Maybe we don't even want the side view here. Uh, maybe we want just the front face. All right, so let's the, the easy part here is the front face. If we can use the selection mask, the rectangle selection, um, let's go something like this and select the parts. This is almost perfect, but you can tell it is a little bit at a rotated angle, unfortunately. So not quite there yet. We need to rotate this image to make a better uh, selection. Either that, or we need to rotate the rectangular selection mask, right? And then make the selection and then re dress things up. So there's a couple of uh, different approaches to that. I'm gonna go and clear the selection. And first of all, I'm gonna make a smaller portion. I'm going to focus on just this building for now. Right, I have the original here. I can always load that back in and restore it from that uh, if I want to go to a different building. But now that I have decided I want to work on this one, there's no need to carry all the rest around it here. So I'm going to crop to that. There's the image and you can do either a selection first, a rough selection with the rectangle tool just like earlier, or you can go with the crop tool and say exactly what part you want to select. Now I'm using a version here that's beyond version 10, so I can actually grab a side and not see the other side move with it. But uh, I think in your earlier version of the uh, crop tool, you'll probably see that as you adjust the top, it also adjusts the bottom. Uh, so you'll have to uh, you know, perhaps f make fewer adjustments or just one or two more. Anyway, once you've got that area selected that you want to work from, Let's go crop to that and let's take a snapshot of this, store this image just in case we need to go back to this one as well. All right, so here we go. Um, <coughs> we, have, we have this image and we'd like to rotate it a little bit. I, get, I gave it enough margin around so we can rotate it without too much, uh, you know, losing uh, too much on the edges. So um, how much rotation is needed and uh, can we somehow ha have some sort of a reference grid? So if you scroll down to your um, on, on your sidebar, which I moved to the right side, you know you can have that on the left or on the right. That's under, um, where is it, settings or layout, right? You can have the sidebar on the left side or on the right. right. I have it on the right side. And the sidebar, if you scroll down to the very bottom of it, there is a section uh, below, the, gray, uh, below the, s uh, the layers. There is a section <coughs> which talks about, let's see, layers, info, and then there's the grids. All right, so under the grids, uh, amongst other things, one thing you see here is just uh, doing a visible grid. And you can see when you click that, it shows uh, vertical and horizontal lines. Now, maybe that's too dense. So you can increase the horizontal spacing and you can increase also the vertical spacing just to have a, a bit of a grid that you can reference as you're working with the image and trying to rotate it. And what you want to focus on now is looking at this side here, right? <coughs> let, me, uh, let me sort of highlight that. This area here, uh, this wall, this edge of the wall, you want to, um, you want to be able to line it up so that it will be perfectly aligned with this vertical line. Maybe we can adjust that vertical line a little bit more to the right. Uh, horizontal spacing, if we if we make it go to the right, there you go, that's almost perfect. Right, so we can see that up here we are drifting away. Down here we're drifting away on the other end, so we definitely have a little bit of a rotation to give the image. And what we can do is simply rotate it with the filter, that's the transform uh, transform filter right there right and so what you do is you say okay let's rotate it maybe this way to the left nope that was the wrong way let's go the other way and hope that we get it oh that's perfect well perfect enough for me right I mean it's never exactly perfect if you zoom in you might find that it's still drifting off a little bit maybe not here I think this is as close as we'll be able to hope for it so that one's good and if we did a fairly good uh, you know, a, a shot with not much of a wide angle distortion, perspective distortion, and it should be pretty good here on the left edge too. And so one thing we can do is go back to that visible grid 
and change the horizontal spacing to go perhaps one more there you go you see here it's pretty much what we would hope for all right so i think we can we can turn that grid off and that's a visible grid and so we have now the image at a fairly perfect rotation building standing upright um, so let's go take a snapshot of that. I would actually save this, you know, save it on file. If you take a snapshot, uh, like if you store the image, it's in memory. And if the program exits for whatever reason, it still is going to be lost. So you want to have a, a save on file on a major milestone like that. Now, one thing you can do is actually just uh, crop the image again to that rectangle that you want to choose. And if indeed the only thing you want to grab is a portion of this building, uh, something like, uh, let's say, image. No, let's go to the rectangle selection tool and select uh, from this corner and go down to this much. Uh, then you, you have paid pretty much your work is done. You know, this, this is the part that's visible, that's opaque. The rest around it is invisible. And you could pick this up as a brush, but it would have a lot of wasted space around it that you don't actually need in the brush image. Right? If you really want just that building here, um, I would actually pick it up like this, go to you selected as brush. And so that's the only thing you have now. It's not currently at full opacity. Let's go have it here at full opacity. And now you can paint with that. All right, so I'm going to go and restore the image. That one's at the angle. That one we probably don't need anymore. That's the one that's rotated. Um, so if you if you want to use this as a starting image, that's a perfect brush already. But you may have other ideas. And uh, before we toss this one, let's store it in our new collection. Uh, let's go to Browse for Media. And <coughs> what you can do is uh, look for, let's pin this down so it doesn't go away. We want this again and again. And uh, I have a category here somewhere, Cityscapes 1. You can name this whatever you do as you create it. I'm, in fact, I'm going to create a new collection here. So I'm going to create, uh, make a folder, right? There's some other options here, browse folders to see what's in there. And that's, by the way, an easy way to see where are your media files, right? If you go browse folder, it opens Windows Explorer and it puts you right in the medias uh, folder of your uh, deployed instance. And you can see in this case here, I'm not working on the Steam edition. I'm working on the one I installed directly at Program Files x86 Howler uh, Medias. All right, so that's where this one is. Wherever your installation lives, that's where it will be found. And then you'll see the, the Medias subfolder there. And I have a Cityscapes here, but I'm going to create a new one. And um, so to create that, you can go Make Folder right here. And I'm going to say that's uh, Cityscapes uh, Mine Whip. So these are mine. And I'm sort of pretending to be you here and <laughs> say <laughs> you're creating your own. Other than the ones that I, I will be releasing on a regular basis, I want you to have the experience of <coughs> building your own and identifying them uh, easily as well. All right, so Cityscapes Mine is a work in progress still. I'm going to call it that. And uh, here they are. Um, there's initially sort of a, 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 a initial image showing here. I'm not sure that there actually is a brush or a media in there, easily found. If you go to the, brush, uh, the browse folder again, uh, we can see here's a newly created folder. And really, there's nothing in there. So it's kind of a placeholder, or maybe a bug. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We'll replace this with the one that we will put right in there. Our current brush we can save it right there. So save media in that currently selected brush uh, folder. Uh, we'll go and say save media and call this uh, whip <coughs> one, uh, uh, perhaps gray building. All right, something like this. Give it enough numbers. <laughs> and there you go. So we have our first there. All right, and so whenever you go to a different brush and you have some uh, some stuff you're painting with it, and, okay, where's my my brush? There is my fir tree. Why is it not moving? Oh, it's the spacing, and I'm on an uneven surface. Uh, anyway, we, you go back to your, there you go, with the mouse, pick it, there you go, you have your brush. All right, <coughs> so building. Now, sometimes one, one thing you want to do with these brushes is add a little bit more uh, spatial depth to it. Right. Uh, first of all, you might even want to change 
uh, its appearance. So one thing you could do is just uh, after you've picked it up, go to the brush menu and store in order to manage a copy of it. All right, so you have a copy that's right here. And uh, the aspect ratio is not retained here. It's showing it in a square, even though it's more oblong and vertical. But that's OK. <coughs> one thing you can do here is change the size and make a fairly big one. You can also hit the X to switch it. X key is horizontal, and uh, the Y key is vertical flip. Right? So you see that option here on the brush um, flip. And you have horizontal is a shortcut X, and vertical is Y. So that's also really useful if you want to have a variety of buildings from the same brush image. Right? You can have one that's this way, and then just hit X to have one the other way. As long as the shadowing, the shading, is not you know, like uh, inconsistent now. Uh, this one here, the sun is almost hitting it uh, up front, so it, it would probably be, it would probably still be fine. But if you really look in detail, say, no, wait, there's a shadow on the right edge here, the darkening, and that looks odd if you have the same building on this side and the same building on that side. So the shadow, uh, you want to keep uh, pay attention to that as well, the shadowing. Um, but uh, if we ignore that for a second, let's see what we could do. Uh, we can change the size. We can easily have them smaller. And we'll talk about how to actually paint them and have them appear at different sizes automatically. There's a couple of techniques as well. What I want to focus on right now is more sort of the tedious building by building block. Uh, perhaps change the hue. There's a hue, saturation, and value. And so you could say, I want a little bit more reddish or bluish and you can change the hue very drastically. A bit more saturation is needed to really see it. So here we have saturation. Let's go increase the saturation. Then you actually see the gray parts are still going to be gray, right? But the, the blue parts may turn reddish. Uh, there's the brightness, the darkness you can change. Um, there is also, obviously, perhaps you want to add some coloring. Right now, the gray parts are not affected much, but the, the blue parts or the, the parts in the windows are. And maybe you want to just look at the RGB values right there and say, OK, you know, let's add a little bit of a reddish tint to it all and reduce the, uh, the green and the blue. And so it's a bit more red rock look. right? And maybe that's what you're heading for uh, when you look at um, what 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 do we call it? A post-apocalyptic look. Um, <coughs> and, uh, what what makes a post-apocalyptic look really? There's a couple of things. There's the coloration, but there's also um, you know bits and pieces are missing. It's broken glass. It's uh, transparencies. Um, it's uh, broken. Let, let's turn the preview of the brush off here for a second. So there's a bunch of things you want to to change on that image to make it look a bit more. Uh, post-apocalyptic. Uh, one of them would be perhaps that the top is missing. And in fact, we didn't even pick it in the first uh, attempt. We had just one single rectangular approach to select it. But what if we want to actually have that nice dome added to it? All right, so there's a tool, there's a couple of tools that you need to become familiar with uh, when it comes to selecting and making you know parts uh, part of the alpha channel. Right, we don't call it making it transparent, because transparent is only what it becomes when you start using it. But the question is, well, what, what is it that makes it transparent? Uh, it's the fact that there is some information in the alpha channel that says you are transparent. Hey, pixel, you know, go away. I don't want to see you. There's a whole bunch of pixels. You can see them, each of them individually. And uh, in fact, it may be smoothing it, and you can change that under the view settings. You can uh, go <coughs> uh, and change whether Let's see, where is it? Presets, uh, colors, GUI, perhaps. It's whether you want to smooth scaling. Right? If you do that, you can see that it's doing a smoothed appearance. Did you notice that? Let me uncheck it, and you'll see it again. So here now, it's showing each pixel without smoothing. Right? And then if you click that, it's now showing. It's kind of hiding the pixels. That's not what you want if you want to work down to every pixel. You want to really see them as is, so you can go and select them or, or deselect them. All right, so <laughs> things you'd like to do is, for instance, um, pick something like um, this area here. Like the, the, the initial rectangular selection might include this top floor. And then how do we add additional details to it? Well, first of all, the rectangle tool again, rectangle selection or rectangle to uh, alpha, will grow and select this. And again, uh, one thing I highly recommend is that you have this tinting appearing here. 
by the selection mask there's an option called overlay if you disable that you will only see the marching ants and uh, that's something you can disable too by the way but I would have both of them enabled and that way you, c you get to see better what parts are out of the selection that's out here what part are in the selection that's in here and those are the ones you want to keep opaque so let's say we want to add this little thing here uh, now if you select this the other the older selection is going away that's no good let's go undo that what you want to do is use the shift key right hold press and hold the shift key and then as you select this it's going to add to the selection and then you can do that again here and add this part so you can bu put your building blocks together quite easily if they are rectangular and you can easily see them uh, selecting them like that now what about something well let's let's grab this uh, chimney in the back here it looks like a chimney I don't know if that's what it really is but let's grab this as well something like this and let's uh, imagine let's say we wanted parts of that not all of it and there's not always a need to take everything that's there right but let's say we wanted to add this part and this part as well and we could go with the rectangular selection like this but we will definitely need some sort of a curved approach here so sometimes you can find simply, like let's say for instance, if I didn't have this part selected and I, I wanted that, let's go undo this. Let's say I wanted to add, uh, add this window here at the top. Uh, you could switch to the oval selection tool and again use the shift key and make an oval selection like this, right? And add that and maybe make it even bigger to add this entire thing. Right, so so that's a technique, but that's not perfect in this case. In some cases, it will always keep using the shift key, though. Make sure that you don't forget that. And if you do forget, then this will happen, and you'll just undo to go back to the prior selection and learn from that mistake. But again, what is the technique to uh, allow adding a non-rectangular or also uh, removing a part of the selection? Right. First of all, we know we, we do the shift to add a selection. But how about we want we went too far here. Let's say we went this far and we say, oh, no, we need to remove this block. It's kind of cutting in. Use the right button. Right. Use the shift key, but with the right button. And then that way you'll remove from the selection. Right. So that's a, another technique. The combination of the shift key and the right button. Uh, here you can use the left button and uh, left button and uh, let's say we didn't want this part it's already non-selected but let's say it had been selected accidentally something like this well you could easily deselect it with the right button something like that right or something like this if you do you don't have to necessarily take it all right even if it's there in the colors doesn't mean you have to keep it in your selection if you want to especially for the post apocalyptic uh, effect uh, in fact you know these windows if you want them to be transparent see-through use the right button and the shift key to remove them from the selection right so now you have holes you're cutting in in those windows and uh, it gets more sophisticated the more um, you pay attention to some of the details maybe you you just have some of the windows shattered and these are very clean shatters <laughs> you you may want to uh, perhaps make it a little bit cleaner but this is definitely something you can do um, and maybe there is uh, something in front of it you don't want to show and so you just hide it by masking it to invisible to transparent right make take it away from the selection and then that way it will be invisible um, let's uh, let's do a test with this one here All right let's say if I pick this up as the custom brush this is what it stands for and one thing you can do by the way you can store the image like I did earlier but you can and and that will store the alpha selection mask as well. It doesn't show it here, but it has a selection mask. Let me prove that. If I go and clear the selection, and then I go to that stored copy that should have that same prior selection, I can show the alpha, replace alpha, and there it is. All right, so the alpha channel was stored with it. That's important to remember. It's there in case you lost it. Another thing you can do is store the alpha just by itself, and that's also a really good technique. Uh, you see, in addition to storing the image, you can store the selection and there's something else which is the uh, current brush so the <coughs> the uh, the store selection here um, this is something you might occasionally use if you want to paint directly on that selection it's a small preview though so it's not always perfect but that's something you can also use to to add to and uh, let's just keep a snapshot here you never know 
right? Because you have options like add this back to this selection. For instance, if I, if I, uh, oops, uh, if I go to the selection and clear it, and then yeah, I want to restore it, I just replace this back into the main active. Boom, there it is. All right, so that's also a nice little handy um, snapshot. Now, let's take a look more at this upper curved dome, how to add this. I would go with the uh, curve tool, right? It's a curved shape. Let's use the curve tool. And the curve tool is not only going to draw a curve, it can also draw into the alpha mask, into the selection. And that's what we will exploit in this case. So first of all, let's make sure we draw some curves uh, by clicking a couple of points. Uh, you might start from here, go over here, and then start going right, perhaps still inside the selection. Oop, that was too close. Let's go. See, sometimes you need to click outside and then grab, go in. Because if they are too close, it, it, does, it thinks you want to move the existing one. See how it, it finds the hot spots or the existing points as you get close to them? So if you have points that are too close, uh, even if they are far away, it seems, because you zoomed in so much, uh, it may actually pick one. Uh, rather than add one here, it may grab this one and move it. See that? Okay, so I may need to go around here and then perhaps start from the outside. There you go. So now also I'm adding my point number four. And one thing that happens is that automatically it will switch to a curved mode. Right, so I can keep adding a few points here and, uh, and a few more. And it's doing a nice interpolated curve going along that edge. All right, so that's probably all I need to create the basic shape that I want to add here. Oh, I need to move out a little bit more. There you go. <coughs> you know what? I, I can actually easily go right in here and basically make my selection contain this entire side, but then also close it back to the first point. Right, I'm here on the first point, just close it on that. And now you have a closed curve, and you can go and adjust these control points if you want them to be a little bit more on the inside or a little bit more closer to that shape. You've got a nice dome ready to for selection. So how do you add that to your current selection mask? Well, easy. Here in the second context bar uh, for the curve tool, there is a mode. Uh, you see here, finishing the curve is to uh, do a brush stroke along that. That's not what we want in this case. We don't want to render a brush along that path. Uh, we don't want to uh, paint it either, which is uh, simulating the pressure from a tablet and changing the size of the brush. Uh, we don't want to fill it. Right? That's another option you have, but we don't want that. But this option here is fill the curve, drawing it to alpha channel. Right? Now, when we do that, is it going to be adding or replacing or subtracting that alpha selection mask? There's actually multiple options, right? And you simply click that and you'll see the options. You can replace, that's not what we want. You can subtract or add. In this case, we want to add the, to the selection. So let's click that and voila, you now have that extra selection along that curved dome added as well. The curve can be dismissed. It will automatically go away if you uh, click a different tool, like going back to the brush tool, and the curve is gone. All right. Now, <coughs> that's a, a really powerful tool with this curve tool to make uh, curved selections. And um, you know, there's a, a bunch of other things. Uh, for instance, you might want to simulate uh, a broken glass that's not broken all the same. Uh, let's say this big one here. Uh, you might you might find it useful to um, to do something like, uh, oops, what did I just do? Fill it or something? I must have clicked. Okay, undo that. There you go. Um, <coughs> so one one thing I want to do is zoom in here and uh, do a selection where the glass is broken. Right? The building is supposed to be there. Parts of the glass is supposed to be there, but some sort of a hole like a star. And that, again, you can do also with the curve tool. Um, I would use the curve tool, but this time I'm going to uh, so clear the curve, and then so I'm going to start the curve tool by going something like uh, something like this and this, and you know you need to perhaps start from the outside a little bit, and then bring it in, and then go. Oh, that one's too close. There you go. But then one thing you notice is it's doing this uh, curving approach again, right? The moment you have three points, when you add the fourth point, it's adding a curve tool. 
So the, the trick here is to, to force it to not doing the curve interpolation. And you may notice there are two types of interpolations, the CATML and the B-spline approach. Uh, but neither of them are good for what we want here. We want some really sharp uh, transition. And there is an option here to say make this a closed curve and another one to make this a polygon. So when you do that, you have the sharp approach without doing the, um, the interpolation. All right, so so we can we can keep drawing straight lines, and uh, for instance here we'll we'll go uh, something like this, and going back like this, and so you basically draw a couple of pieces in and out like that, and then the upper part is going to be uh, all inclusive. Uh, I grabbed the wrong point here, so the upper part you what you want to do is have something like this so it's surrounding the upper part of the window frame although you might also have an extra point let's say this one here uh, where there's still some shattered glass uh, remaining opaque as well right, so that could be another level of sophistication to add there as well there you go so you have a selection again and you want to add it to the current selection so that this part that was not selected will now partly select be selected again all right so let's go to um, add to the alpha what's the last one here oh that's an animation okay so here add to the selection add to the selection in add mode there so render that curve and you see it's it's been adding the the selection here now there's a couple of other techniques that are very useful if you find this a bit tedious let me go back to the paintbrush and really it would be to actually use in fact before i do that i'm going to go grab a snapshot since i had an earlier snapshot here I can do get alpha so i now have uh, this uh, latest updated copy here but one thing that you'll you'll find especially if you want to do some post-apocalyptic scenes is that it may be easiest to just paint that selection paint on alpha and there's a couple of ways to do that or a couple of reasons to do that uh, for instance up here and it seems like I, I lost this, this code I must have done an undo one or two many times so I'm gonna go and quickly add this this dome again and then I'm gonna chip away but this time instead of adding by using the brush tool or, or that curve tool I'm going to use the brush I'm gonna right click on the brush or look for this little pull down on the browse for media or maybe in the media browser you may see uh, paint on alpha there it is there's a couple of blobby 50 hard 50 soft 50 All right so if you use the the hard 50 brush uh, or you right click and you look for paint on alpha there it is hard 50 um, what happens with those is that you can you can easily paint on the alpha channel and chip away or add to the selection right and therefore to what part will be opaque versus what part is transparent so if you paint here this is a big one though it's too big a brush so I'm gonna need to make this a little bit smaller uh, let's go change the size something like this oh it's not taking it I guess I need to enable the brush transform that's under settings for the brush custom allow brush transform yeah now it's smaller okay so uh, let's pin this down too so let me undo those oops what happened here all right let's um, let's go back where's my stored copy of the alpha channel that's why we need this right there it is okay let's go replace there so I want to add I'll simply add right there now so that's kind of convenient but it's also a bit confusing because while you're painting you see the big bounding box of the brush uh, just focus on the black parts and see where that black part is taking you and with that, uh, you see the brush is painting an additional selection into that area, right? So you gradually add to it. Now, if you go too far, you can either use undo or not, or <laughs> or you can uh, you can right click and draw the opposite selection in the upper area here. So there's a couple of ways to to work that. Now, this is a very sharp brush and as you saw there are a few others there's a soft paint on alpha soft 50 uh, and again that one's too big but we'll we'll make it a little bit smaller with the size and you can either do that right here 
or you can do a store copy if this is a custom brush which I think this one is so go to the store and and keep it there you go you see the soft brush now and you can change the size with that one too and then you can preview it and actually get a better idea of where it's gonna be that's probably the best approach if you want to really see what you're about to add to the selection right and with the fluffy soft look uh, especially if you add some uh, or reduce the opacity uh, it's going to only gradually remove that selection right so you can also gradually add or remove selection and make it that post apocalyptic look here now by just having a little bit of uh broken wall appearance see that so it, it's gradually coming up and then here perhaps this part is intact but then here maybe there is a portion of that chimney missing simply by painting away the, the coloration of the chimney is still there but we won't see it if the alpha mask is blocking it if we're making it invisible all right so you could even have a bullet hole grazing it here on the side so what is a post-apocalyptic look you know maybe it is everything has kind of rounded corners or especially the parts that are up at top and then there's occasionally this part is transparent because it's made of glass uh, and then the real glass here as well uh, you want perhaps the upper part to be visible still the lower part to be visible oops that was the wrong let's not use the right button let's use the left button uh, something like this so you have them opaque in the bottom part kind of a broken glass remaining there and maybe also a little bit other in the upper part right maybe we have um, some parts of the glass but especially in the in the lower part with the left button and and then uh, a little bit here in the upper part Ma make it even smaller if you need more detail make it a very just three or four pixels and then that way you can have some some real broken bits and pieces showing here or there all right so those basically are uh, selections in the alpha channel that will actually show some glass still uh, present right and if if you do a little bit more on the bottom part here and just a few on the upper part that's how you'll probably get to make it look like gravity has helped uh, collect some of these and fall to the ground here now there's much more to it to make it um, look like post-apocalyptic but that's certainly a starting point is deciding what parts you may not need to see anymore uh, cut off some sharp edges or add some additional sharp edges uh, perhaps have portions of this chimney missing stuff like that right the more chaotic it looks uh, the more it might make you feel like this really is post-apocalyptic um, so you have a couple of um, ways to work on the alpha but there's not just the alpha you also want to work on the content itself down here I'm going to add a bit more to this before we do the next step so I'm going to add again with the shift key I'm going to add something like this much here okay and <coughs> with that we do have some holes left here that's fine let's keep painting on them and uh, perhaps add a little bit more oh wait I need to paint on alpha that's not on alpha anymore so I guess I'm out of that paint on alpha mode let's go back to selecting the brush uh, right click paint on alpha hard 50 uh, let's take the soft 50 uh, th there's a blobby also let's talk about that one that one has some random positioning so it's a bit of a blobby uh, mixture and if you store brush store and work with that let's go and clear this one if you if you use this one with the the smaller size still it's going to to paint all over the place so you see how it's it's making holes all over different parts and this is still too much random positioning so you want to <coughs> you want to be able to uh, first of all restore oh where's my alpha channel let's go and there uh, one thing you can do is you can you can randomly add holes or or deselect right and so that's that's perhaps too much random offset so you want to go to the brush settings and reduce how much the random positioning is this is 32 let's bring it down to a much smaller amount something like this okay. so now we have a selection that's a little bit more contained but that's a great way to create some sort of a random looking uh, partly 
destroyed building look right now still it's that's not the only thing that you need for post apocalyptic uh, it's it's a interesting approach but uh, we'll we'll take a look at a few others and one particular thing that we also want is actually the coloration itself so let's take a copy here of the alpha get alpha okay so we have the alpha channel here all selected what I need to do next is to also work on the coloration itself post apocalyptic has a bit more um, a reddish tint perhaps with the the, the, the painting of, of dust uh, sand um, maybe not you know maybe this is just after the apocalypse and there's just uh, not enough days or months of wind storms and sand and dust and debris on it yet but you might want to look at some of the filters that uh, are worth looking into here so there's a couple of stylized uh, options um, for instance you might uh, want to experiment with waxify uh, or with a few others and some of them might be a little bit too much of it so uh, check check the, the smoothness and the fade level and uh, that might already give you a very interesting look perhaps you want some of that but not that much of it use the interactive undo to bring it back to none of it or full of it or just uh, something in between so you have a, a fade last action there um, there's also the filters on the rendering side if you want to sim simply put a different uh, look on all of that material like add a brick texture to it right or add um, oh what's the other one dread plating right that one has this this uh, vertical uh, first of all the this the size of it and then also the ir the weathering look here uh, but of course that will ch dramatically change your appearance but hey you could do that and use the fade last action to go back to a little bit prior look as well so you have a mix of that uh, glass still showing but some of that uh, extra uh, dread plating as well and you could then go perhaps uh, use it instead of a multiply mode or replace mode you could do uh, a, a screen mode or something like that uh, plus you can also add some more sharpening like uh, color embossing and that often will re uh, in, uh, in reinforce some of those uh, bumps the, the bumpy look uh, you can also do a, a sharp uh, let's say sharpen filter like the digital photo enhance uh, perhaps in HS hue saturation value mode uh, those also can add quite a bit of of uh, detail uh, or or fanciness to it let's go back uh, a few times until before the first there you go so we have this I'm going to store this image and its alpha channel and uh, this time I'm going to add a few more things um, perhaps give it a more of a reddish tint so adjust color and you could do the adjust color by uh, increasing the red reducing the blue uh, and the green something like that uh, there's also a lighting filter uh, that's under the stylized lighting tool that one is also a, a very remarkable filter uh, you can see a bit of specular addition change the distance of the light source if you want to in fact have the impression that there is some fire at the bottom of the city you want to have some lighting appearing there so you can you can move the light to the top to the bottom and give it a bit of a reddish tint um, like flames and fires down here so uh, let's bring it a little bit brighter there you go so now you have uh, more of a presence of fire down in the in the city as some debris are on the ground and burning um, <coughs> you could uh, perhaps add let's see specular specular highlight could add a little bit more of that texture don't do too much of that but you can see how there is some interesting uh, smoothness uh, if you want to blur it and then also get the original coloration there too there you go something like that All right, so there's there's a, a lot of different techniques that you could use to improve the appearance of that and once you're ready you just pick this up I'm gonna add a little bit more down here I got some room to add extra so I'm, I'm going to do this in a couple of steps this part in the front I'm not interested in keeping so what I'd like to do is actually keep a portion of this and replicate it All right, so I'm gonna actually use a custom brush for that by using um, this tool here custom brush selector tool and and pick it up let's say these three floors from here 
going up to this or this or this about this much maybe all the way to here right something like this to about here and so now I have this part and I could stamp it down here but right now the alpha channel is blocking it if I stamp it here nothing's going in right here it is but I want it down here so I need to expand the alpha channel uh, to to allow it or temporarily remove the alpha channel so I'm gonna grab a copy just to make sure I have the latest copy of the alpha channel here get alpha so I have a snapshot of it here then I can go and clear the alpha and I can paint just in the RGB channels uh, now here we're going to see a little bit of a blur a transition because the upper part is much brighter than the lower part and if I don't want to see that I'm gonna need to do something about it or I can flip it vertically with the Y key Let's let's uh, get the keyboard focus here. Okay, there you go. So now you have a nice transition on that, uh, and you can get it somewhere around here. Uh, maybe I need to paint it so that it sees the movement. That's a drag. Sometimes uh, I might need to change the step distance to zero to actually see it, and also reduce this uh, random positioning. If I want to position properly, I don't want the randomness added. Right. So something like this here. That's probably better. I, I twitched by a pixel though, it's a little bit off. So let me try that again. Something like that. I have a very noisy mouse here. I think it's moving even if I don't move. Maybe I need to be a little bit off. There you go. That's that's good enough, right? You can barely see any transition here. Plus you can always blur that too. Uh, if you zoom out, you won't notice it. But the lighting is off because it's getting darker again at the bottom. That's okay. We can fix that later. I'm going to go and uh, just add a little bit of this and probably we might have done this extension before we even add the lighting oh don't forget to vertically reflect it again uh, so that it's it's again now showing the dark side to the dark side there you go that's good enough um, and so now it's time to add that selection again replace the selection and go and hide the brush preview and and add to that building the extra selection that we need now that we have the coloration the way we wanted it to. So I'm going to add with the shift key down, I'm going to add this part to my brush to make it part of the selection. Now I'm a little bit off here on the side so I could fix that by do undoing and redoing uh, a, a more precise selection or I can use the right button to select and with the shift key down to deselect really that particular part there too. All right. And again, if you have some uneven parts along the side of the building, uh, you could actually cut them out right here. Right? If you wanted something like this. Sometimes you have some, some indentations of the concrete block versus the windows and the balconies and other things that give you an uneven uh, edge on the side there. All right. Um, all right, I'll leave it with this. This is an interesting building for a variety of users and I'm going to keep that. Now there's a couple of things I might want to do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to pick it up as a custom brush, right? So that's assuming I don't have anything, no, no marching ants on the edges. Make sure you zoom in and out a little bit to check that. To zoom in and out like this, you can either use the, um, the zoom tool here or you can use the shift and the control key both down at the same time and then with the left button it moves, with the right button it zooms. Right. So when you don't see any marching ants around it except for the building then you know you have a good selection right there and you can go straight to brush and use the selected as brush. Now you have a brush, you can preview it and the next thing I would, I would do definitely here is to actually save it in the, in the media browser. Right. So here is my next Cityscapes whip and we will save this media um, let's see building post apo post apocalyptic um, reddish one this is our first post apocalyptic reddish appearing building um, so this brush is uh, pretty interesting um, we could certainly do a few more things to it, but uh, you know we want to paint with it too. So let's go and oh, let's let's before we do that, let's also see another technique to actually grab it. Let's undo to the point where you still have that selection mask. And one thing I'd like to do is actually have uh, a, a slightly different approach to picking it. 
right? And rather than letting the system figure out the most very tight selection of the bounding box, the rectangle selection with this U selection as brush or U selected as brush, uh, what you can do is you can also select it right there with the custom brush once again and give it a little bit more room on the outside, right? So you could go, let's zoom in a little bit. There you go. You could say, okay, I need a little bit of margin at the top here, perhaps be a little bit on the safe zone, especially if it's a soft selection, not a crisp selection. And um, perhaps the bottom, I can even cut off a little bit if I don't want some of that anymore. But th that way you have a brush that's also very useful. And again, the, the, the glass in the upper part is transparent because we had some holes cut in there. All right, so um, I'm going to store this one too. I'm going to store make save media and it will be post apo reddish too. Post apo reddish 02. Okay, so we have one brush. We can paint with this one. We have another brush. Oh, and where did my media? I think I need to pin it down. Um, there you go. We have the other one. Pin brain. No, both of these have some randomness to the positioning and the sizing and other things that we might want to change as well. It whatever we had in effect is what went into the saved information for the media. So uh, we are not stuck with that though. We can always change it to something else. All right. Let's go and restore the other original image. If I still have that, Control V might bring that original image it's still in the clipboard so i'm going to say this time we'll replace the existing image so we have our original buildings here and this time i'm going to just paint with that on top of it so i'm going to go grab it um post apocalyptic one or two let's take number one make it uh, a stored copy and now we can easily resize that have a few bigger buildings and you can just paint across there. That's the, not exactly the perfect paint, though. Um, so what we want to do is uh, let's go and undo. Come on, um, undo this, and uh, have some randomness to that positioning. All right. So uh, brush settings. Right. Go select the brush. You are in the brush already. Select settings if you don't have that yet. Pin it down, and then um, let's see what we can do to to add a little bit of randomness to that appearance. Right now it's doing one streak like that. Uh, what I'd like to do is add some randomness to the position first, All right? Something like a lot of randomness. So it's hopping around, but it's too close to each other. So undo, and this time I'm gonna make the step distance a little bit bigger. Okay, so now they're coming close, uh, farther apart, far enough that they don't overlap or almost, maybe I need to go a little bit farther, something like that. Um, there are a couple of other things we may want to do, and uh, you know that random position is one thing, um, but it's a random position in horizontal and in vertical as well. Actually, I think what I want to do is have the background a little bit more the same tint, reddish. So I'm going to add some filter to that. Um, adjust color a couple of things we will want to do probably first of all adjust color give it a, a bit of the same reddish tint then also uh, let's see what else what other filters could be useful here you know both for the backgrounds or for the brushes if we apply them to the brush uh, thresholds values the contrast sometimes Reduce if you if you want to make it look like there's a lot of dust in the air, a lot of uh, scattered light. Uh, you know, it's a bit brighter, but also less contrasty. Uh, something like that. Uh, then you have also perhaps uh, some photographic filter, soft contrast improvement that could be useful. A bit on the brighter side, maybe not too much of it. Um, what else do we have? Oh, some artistic filters. There's the wet paint. That one actually would be useful um, to to show on the buildings that we put into the brush, right? Have that that washed down look. Um, and you can see it's kind of a vertical streak in this case here. Um, let's see what else. So that's just the background. Uh, oh, there's a. Uh, 
sunset day for night that one uh, makes it a bit more uh, dark night vision not night vision but dark dim low low contrast uh, and of course we could do a uh, interactive undo on any of those to fade it somewhere in between all right so let's focus on let's let's make the image a little bit smaller so that will resample let's resample it to half size so now the brush will appear quite a bit bigger than that and uh, what I want to do really is have that brush appear a couple of times in front at different sizes and so that's that's one thing that you can do uh, random position but how do you change the size there is a random size or rather a well there's a random size but there's also a controlled size that I want and that goes into the area of uh, going back to uh, the the uh, artist guides and the grids information here on the on that um, on the side uh, sidebar having the grids and at the very bottom of the grids there's a z scale guide right so what's the z scale guide what the z scale guide does is it it changes the size of your custom brush based on the brightness of the image in the swap the swap image swap buffer that's not the one you see here here I'm in the main image as you can see here how 10 main I'm on the main image but if I switch to the swap image um, and you can do that in a couple of ways including this s here as in jump or switch to the jump to the swap image what you can do is put a gradient here that will change the size that will affect the size of the the brush uh, if you have the z scale enabled right the z scale guide enabled so I'm going to put that there. That's right now ha has already some effect because currently the image that's in the swap is uh, the one that used to be there, right? If I switch it back, it's this one. So now here, nothing is happening. But this image itself in the background with those blocks, if I switch here, uh, it is now in the in the back side. So it's actually taking that as a cue to change the size of the brush. What we want to do is um, temporarily turn off this brush it's too much of a distraction we want to create a gradient that will show um, uh, sort of a change in size based on how far in distance we are painting and so it might be that if we place the brush around here it needs to be fairly small and then if we place it down here it should be just much larger so we can have a gradient uh, something like uh, just plain black to white let's go uh, linear gradient let's see the gradients that are available uh, maybe something like this one and then um, it needs to go basically from here to here it needs to be somewhat dark to somewhat bright in a fairly short range right now uh, not here on the main image let's go and undo that right we need to have that in the swap image so I'm gonna go to the swap image and place it in here uh, I'll go not totally black uh, oh, it needs to be black here and then bright here. Black is going to make it smaller. Dark is the, s the darker it is, the smaller the brush. The brighter it is, the the bigger it will be. All right. So um, now, now where to have it and where to end it? Uh, it would be nice if we could actually see that other image at the same time, right? The one that's here. Well, if we switch to the swap image then it goes into hiding on the other side and what we can do is we can enable them both this is called swap mixing or layer mixing you click this thing here the upper right corner bigger thumbnail that one enables or disable the, the blending it's not switching the two it's just showing both at the same time and you can right click it and change the layer blending mode to many others like around gray or or something like that so you can see if you go like this you have them both if the moment you click this here you see them both but careful now right now we are working on the main image we need to switch to the swap image and now we can see it but we're actually working on the swap image all right so if we put the the gradient in here it will be something like this and uh, if we turn the swap uh, blending off you can see the gradient is right there and that's sort of what you want to do to k kind of get an idea of where is it ending where is it starting now you don't want the building to ever be really small so you don't want it to be black right? you want it to be dark gray let's go clear it and do that again one, one way you could do that is simply have the gradient stretch up a little bit higher or let's undo that you do go from here to here but then you do an interactive undo 
right? You go to interactive undo, and you blend. So you have at least some amount of gray, not totally dark, not totally black, right? Something like this. And then that way, the buildings will have a minimal size here, but not totally down to zero size. And then up here, it will be at the full size. All right, so let's let's uh, see that perhaps one more time. Let's go roughly from here to here. So we actually have a range where it's always the same size here, the same bright at full white. And then here it's black. We need to interactively undo that to sort of a medium gray. Something like this, perhaps. All right. Blend the two together and switch back. So now we're looking at the main image and we know that the swap image has that gradient in it, which when we have the Z scale guide enabled is what will change the size of the brush. Now we just need to go back to the brush and enable the preview and you see the size will change. Up here it's small, but it doesn't get any smaller. It doesn't go down to, to full zero size because we left it at gray rather than black. And then here it gets closer and it gets bigger. Right, so um, that's a good start. We have now the ability to plaster a couple of small buildings here and then come down here and have a couple of bigger buildings up there. Right, and the spacing of the, these buildings also needs to be changing. Right, it needs to be a function of how, cl how small are they, uh, meaning like how, how far away uh, do they appear. If they are farther away, they need to be spaced closer together. We do have a basic step here, uh, uh, spacing, but uh, we, we want that spacing to be modulated by the scaling of it. And that's done automatically. If you look at this parameter, let me move this aside here. If you look at these parameters in the brush settings, there is a thing called relative. That's the relative spacing of the step distance. So it's relative to the scale. The, if the scale goes up, the, s the step distance also is affected by it and goes up with it. If you don't, then it's a fixed distance no matter how big it is. So you see here, for instance, I have this fixed distance, and then here I have the same fixed distance, and now they are starting to overlap, right? Whereas if I say go relative, go in relative mode, that distance here is going to be a bigger distance when it's a bigger scale. Right, so now you see the spacing maintained. So y everything is really under your control here. You can have it one way or another, and you can have it overlap when you want it. You can have it overlap when you are at small size. So many different ways to work with this. All right, so um, let's go and disable the Z scale and just do individual uh, paints one by one. Let's scale it up. It's a, at 100. You know, if you want to scale it up bigger, you can. You, go, you can go to the brush and resample it and say, okay, let's scale it up uh, this way, something like that. And so now you have this brush even bigger. And you can see through those windows. Right? Now it may have a little glow. It may have that traditional uh, anti-aliased glow effect. You see a little bit of whitish. In fact, it's really visible if you paint at very narrow step distance. If you reduce the step distance, uh, there you see a lot of white edges, right? And so that's uh, something we can reduce uh, by looking at the pre-multiply correction. Go to the brush and pre-multiply correction and tell it that it used to be white when we painted that in the background. But maybe it wasn't white exactly, but it was something bright. And that will fix it to a large extent. So now we have a much better looking brush. That's really the brush you should keep in your media browser. All right, so we're never done until we're done, right? <laughs> Basically, it's what it amounts to is that there is always something le left to do to make it even better. But now you do have some buildings that look uh, increasingly good with some holes, with some, uh, you know, basically some uh, debris there, some posts up. Oh, there's some stuff flying in the air still. <laughs> you can see it's not totally done. Like I said, it's it's never done. Uh, but you can uh, you can see that there is a good amount of benefit and progress there. I'm going to go stamp this down with um, zero or one and just stamp one down and then I'm going to undo with the interactive undo to just have some of that there and then I'm going to go and stamp one more down and may maybe even make it bigger than that. So I'm going to store this brush and that one is a quick way to manage it. Store and manage allows you to size it down but also size it up to even 200 percent of that so now you have another one of those and sometimes you need to zoom out uh to to get it to exactly where you want it and and then paint it 
or or just stamp it down. Right. Sometimes what you do is you you stamp it if it doesn't take it for whatever reason. Do a shift A. Uh, that doesn't look like it actually took that because the random position perhaps we need to have it down to zero, something like this. Uh, and we still have too much of that random positioning. Let's get rid of that. And then we can actually tell it exactly where to paint it. Okay. All right, well, I think that's enough for a first uh, intro to uh, working with these uh, photographs and starting to build your own uh, custom brushes of uh, buildings, city blocks. Um, that we will be exploring a few more, but uh, let's get busy and we want to create a bunch of these. Uh, not necessarily the uh, post-apocalyptic look. Um, that's something that uh, you may want to need for your you may need to have for your game. Uh, I'm going to focus on uh, city blocks uh, in their original shapes and coloring, but I want to also give you some of the tools that you can use um, to, to change them. Right? So you'll start from what we release if you want to, or you create your own. But if you use what we release, you may want to find a couple of ways to modify it. And uh, certainly one is to work directly from the brush. If you do have a brush and you want to um, refine it, uh, you have a whole bunch of filters that are not on the brush, these are on the image, but there's also a whole bunch of filters in the animated brush, the brush timeline. Right? So with that you can apply a whole bunch of filters uh, to an animated brush, but you have to have it as an animated brush, meaning either multiple buildings, different buildings in that single brush collection, or if you look at this one here, there's a, a film strip of only one image. It's just, this is not an animated brush. You need at least two. I would recommend you go with three. So just copy this one to itself. Make sure first you do a reset so it's not changed in color or, or size and rotation. And then do an add frame so it adds itself and do that again. So now you have a minimum of three frames there to uh, create to define as an animated brush. What that means is that I'm not done with this tutorial. <laughs> no, really, what we need to do, one more step here, is to look at the brush, animate a brush, and go to animate a brush timeline. And that's very similar to what you would see if you had actually an animation. Uh, let me just give you an idea. If you had an animation of three frames, or four, or something like that, uh, you have those three frames here, and you want to apply the timeline in an animation, we know how to do that. Right, so here is applying the timeline over four fame frames, and there's a whole bunch of filters you can throw at that, including even changing the amount of coloring. But if you don't change them over time or along the timeline, you can just simply make them, for instance, darker, a bit more greenish, a bit more bluish, add that and apply it, and so now the whole sequence in the image is changing but sometimes we already have it in the brush. So now, if you have it in the brush, make it a animator brush, if that's what, if it's not yet an animator brush, and then you can go to the brush timeline, the animator brush timeline. And what that does is give you very similar list of filters, not the same exactly, but very similar. And you have three frames in this particular uh, animator brush, so it shows one, two, three. Three keyframes, or three frames. And for either one of those, you could change um, the, the, you can apply these filters to do all sorts of effects with that. Uh, so for instance, you have an embossed you want, you want it a little bit more embossed. Um, you, can, you can do all sorts of, let's say embossed as much, let's go render it, and then keep it keep the render to keep working at it. So now the upper one here, the source sequence, is the one that has the embossing applied and you can emboss it even more. Or you could say, hey, I want to have some uh, edge detection on that um, or some Sobel e edge detection or uh, min max it or uh, find a negative of that, make it look like glass, bluish color or change the hue, the saturation, um, there's a variety of uh, th things you could do directly on the brush image sequence. Uh, let's see one that might really bring it home here, maybe an artsy filter. There are fewer here, but there are still a few. That are, there's a, a wet paint, there you go. And apply, uh, oh, apply current paper, that could be very useful too, if you have a paper texture 
that you would like to use. Uh, but let's do let's do uh, the, the wet paint look, so it looks a bit faded vertically. Um, let's go render that and keep it. Oh, and talking about uh, faded, maybe the blur will do it too. There's a blur collection. There's a motion blur. There you go. That will work. Mystic vision. That sometimes with the dark mode or dark vision uh, will be useful. Um, I guess we don't have that in this case, but uh, we do have the light diffusion, the motion blur, and the angle. So let's see what it does here. This is sideways right now. Right, so what you need to do is not go sideways in the other direction, but rather 90 degrees, something like this. 89 is close enough. Um, I'm going to go to 90. Just use the, uh, the cursor here to adjust it until you have roughly the angle you need. And, and don't give it too much of that to vertical, because you might not notice it. Actually, this one's moving up, so let's go to 270 degrees. That's moving it down. That's close enough. And there you go. Okay, so apply that. And then once you've rendered a sequence of filters and you said that's the one I want in my brush, you just need to keep it. So right now the effect, the most recent effect I applied is in the destination sequence. And I'm done. I don't need to put it back in the source to keep working at it. So I'm going to copy this destination sequence into my current brush. And that's under options. And I say get uh, use dest as brush, right? The destination, use that as the brush. And you need to have at least three frames in that animation for that to work. I'm not sure if that's a bug. Maybe two, uh, you would think it should be enough. But uh, I've seen it not do that. But now I have a sequence where in the in the uh, in the brush it it's got that vertical uh, tearing or vertical uh, streaks, and um, you know if that's the effect you're looking for, that's how you can do that directly on the brush. All right, enough for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there. There's a lot to absorb. Keep practicing, and uh, you'll get uh, perfect before you know it. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.